to Adobe Illustrator for Cartographers. I'm Dr. Heath Robinson. This lesson, I think we're about ready to start building out our legend. I've been working on my map. I've got uh, lots of different symbols on there. I've been playing around with some of the different techniques that we've been learning uh, in this course. I've got a few different examples of the different things on the map, and I think it's about time to go ahead and build the legend. The big thing I can tell you with constructing the legend is the alignment palette. In order to build a great legend, you want to ensure that you're using the alignment palette and everything is nice and neat and straight and evenly spaced. That's going to be the key to building a fantastic looking legend. We don't want one of those stock legends that are generated by uh, an analytical software program. We want to build out a legend here that looks exactly the way that we want the legend to look. So, of course, I'm going to create a new layer to put the legend in, and that way I'm working on nothing but that layer. And I'm going to start, I'm going to put the legend down here by drawing out a rectangle just to give me a general idea of what I might like this legend to look like, what kind of size I might want it to be. I don't know how big I'll need it. I have a few different symbols on here to stick into the legend. It would be great if it didn't completely overrun everything. We'll just begin with that right now to give me an idea. Not necessary to put the word legend in the legend. Not necessary. If you've been using symbols and brushes and so forth, it's probably going to be pretty easy to go through and pull out uh, the symbols and the swatches and the colors that you're using on your map. So that's what I've done here. I just went ahead and went to my symbols and I started pulling out uh, some of the different point symbols anyway that I have on my map. And that way I've got them down here in my legend uh, to sort and to organize. Uh, I've got uh, these different symbols here. Of course it's very important that they are exactly the same color, size, and shape and everything uh, that are present on your map. And then I'm just going to use the text tool to start writing in what these things are. And probably I'm going to make sure that my text alignment is over to the side. There we go. That's inside the actual text. Once you've gotten the names all put out there, now you can align them. Um, I might be able to put. Let me show you something with that background. Now I'm on the one layer with the legend and I've sort of got this box right here but you saw what happened. I'm trying to be selecting stuff and it's inevitable that I'm going to move that box. There is the ability to lock individual items in a layer and that might be something I'd be interested in doing here. And I haven't shown you that so I might as well show you now. You can also work in sublayers. Each layer can be composed of many many different sublayers. You may have noticed that if you come over here to a layer and you press the little triangle which shows that it's expanded, you can start to see all of the different sublayers inside that layer. And you can go and turn on and off and lock and uh, unlock sublayers inside a particular layer as well. So you can do that. You can use sublayers. But if I click right here and I select object lock selection, I've locked that box that I've drawn. Sometimes I do that accidentally. Object selection you can see the keyboard shortcut for that selection. Sometimes I've hit that and not known it and locked a selection and then not been able to figure out why I couldn't select it. Because you'll notice that my legend layer is unlocked. The layer is unlocked. I've just frozen that particular object. Sometimes this is useful, but if you forget you've done it, you may uh, confuse yourself like I sometimes do. Or sometimes if you accidentally hit the keyboard shortcut, you might think, why in the world, why can't I select something? It might be locked. So a great little technique in certain circumstances like this. I might need to adjust it later on, but hey, that'll work. Now here is the shipwreck text, old castle, important battle, city, capital city. The first thing I'm going to do is just make sure that they are aligned to the center. Aligned to the center. And aligned to the center. I'm thinking I'm going to want I've got enough room to put another one down here. 
capital city might have to go in the second column. The first step is to make sure those are aligned. Now I want to make sure that these are aligned. So if I click here and select all of those, I want to align those to the horizontally aligned left. Now all of those are horizontally aligned. And if I move over with my keyboard now, I nudge them over, they'll all nudge over by exactly the same amount. And I want to make sure that all of these are perfectly centered. There. Now these are aligned by the center. These are aligned to the left. And these are all aligned to the horizontal center. And these have all been aligned to the vertical center. So everything is aligned and spaced very well. Sometimes you have trouble if you have different symbols using the spacing tool. Uh, and you may have to visually adjust to make sure that everything is, 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 is aligned. If different symbols are different sizes and so forth. We may have that uh, situation here in a moment. But now I've got all of those lined up. Often what I'll do is start to group them. Just using my keyboard shortcut to group and make sure that everything is distributed. Look what happens if I use the distribute. Uh, it moved the castle up a little bit. Maybe that's right. Maybe that's the good look. Uh, but uh, using the alignment tools is essential for making sure that your legend looks good. Uh, now I've got a couple of different lines on here. I've got two different kinds of roads and then I've got two different kinds of area symbols. I've got the marsh and then I've got my dots down here. Oh, and I've got the stream as well. So if I create, what I like to do is I just create one line that is the width that I want and then use the brushes there and then copy that so it's exactly the same length and apply the other brush to it. Probably since I have the shields on those, I would want to put the shields on these. You may have noticed that I changed up the shield a little bit when I put the shield on my roads because the default shield icon that Illustrator came with has this red outline and I want it to be black and so what I did was break the link to the symbol and then just say hey make that black and now I have a black outline on the shield. I want to group those. Oh, I do want to make sure they're centered. and then give them names. Group all of those together, make sure they're aligned. Well, I won't group them yet because I'm not exactly sure how their alignment is going to work. I'm also, I'm, you can see that I'm running out of space here. Oh, I need to put in my line for my river symbol. Some people may want to make this a wavy line. I, I don't want to do that. I can't remember exactly what I used for my rivers. River color and check out what my stroke is. It was a five point stroke. I want to be sure that that is what's on my legend. Give that a little bit of a curve right there. And I also have to do area symbols. So I think it's very important to make sure that when you're showing an area symbol they're all shown in the same color box. You could use some kind of rounded box. I've got a lot of uh, sharp corners going on here so I want to stick with that. Uh, you could use ovals in certain circumstances as well, but I've got uh, two major different kinds of area symbols right here. I'm going to say, hey, what if I want a box about like that? And fill that in with my marsh symbol. We'll use that in a moment. I'm going to copy another one and fill that in with my dots. And in that particular symbol, I use a stroke of one point, or I used a stroke of one point, and then I also used a dashed line around the outside of six points. That's that particular symbol. 
Some people may want to enclose this, but I'm not going to enclose it because it's not enclosed on my map. I just left that symbol open. We did a few others where the symbol was enclosed, and so I'd want to include that on my legend if I did. Swamp? I don't know what this is. Wild area, maybe. In order to unlock that, because clearly now the size of my legend is going to be incorrect, I need to make something longer here. And since I'm just making uh, making this up, I might want to move that shipwreck so you can see it someplace else. But I clearly need to change this. Now I locked that. How do I unlock it? Well, if you go up to Object, Unlock All, that will now be unlocked, and I will be able to move it around again. So if you ever accidentally hit that or accidentally hit the keyboard shortcut, and you can't select something that you think that you should... Uh, you can go up to object and say unlock all if something's locked. It may be locked and then it will unlock it for you and you'll be able to manipulate it again. So let's see what I need to do here as far as setting up this legend. A lot of the times in legends you use groups inside groups inside groups inside groups. I think I'm going to have to get some kind of L shape going here. So those will probably fit what I'd like to do. Use my pathfinders to cut that out. I think that's looking pretty good. I'm still a little bit unhappy with it. That's looking better. That legend may be overpowering the map a little bit, a little bit too large, kind of crowding everything. But you've got the idea now. Use your alignment palette. Make sure that everything is aligned, make sure everything is evenly spaced. That's really the trick to doing a professional-looking legend.